Hi everyone, uh, I'm Eli and this is Jocelyn and today we're going to uh, present you Cartograph. Uh, oh. Okay, so we, were, uh, we do a lot of reverse engineering with uh, Jocelyn and we thought that it might be fun to uh, actually apply f uh, reverse engineering technique to games and that's Cartograph. So uh, you see on the slide you have a hashtag, it's Cartograph, we put for you a video of the demo of the tool and also already put the slide, so if you want to gather them, you have them gathering the link directly on Twitter. Uh, so, what is Cartograph? Cartograph is basically a uh, memory analyzer which we're going to do uh, patching on fly games and we're going to show you how we can do that and how efficient it is to hack modern game. So, why are we trying to do that? Uh, for multiple things, so you can do a lot of stuff with Cartograph. Uh, you can first try to have uh, units which level faster. We can also have a way to have infinite monies or any resources you want. And we also have a way to have uh, X-ray vision, meaning we can have, uh, we know what your opponent is doing. And finally, you, we also have an uh, invisible unit. Uh, before we start, let me show you what the end result is. So this is a video of Supreme Commander 2. And if you notice our tank on the bottom, uh, it never dies. It says, uh, health boys keep replenishing, that's cartograph in action is basically replenishing the health pool. So do you want to know how we do that? Yes. Okay, so the way we do that is uh, we are doing uh, in-flight uh, memory patching. So view your game as a huge chunk of memory and what we try to do is to modify it. And if you modify it in the right way, then you end up having a uh, nice effect. So having a building, having inv um, an infinite amount of money and that kind of stuff. So the nice thing about uh, doing in-flight uh, patching of the memory is that it's a generic way to attack game. You can do this on any kind of game you, you want. It's pretty fast. It turns out that actually uh, looking at the memory and try to reverse a game from the memory is, for me, actually faster than doing a binary analysis. And finally, it's almost invis invisible because you're only rewriting a part of the memory. So people, it's very hard for a game to know that you, to detect that you did cheat. So, Actually, we have some drawback for this uh, kind of game, for this kind of attack. Uh, first, it's really finding a needle in a haystack. Uh, for instance, Supreme Commander, which just showed it to you, uh, have about 800 megabytes of data. And what we are looking for, let's say the map, is only one megabyte. So you're really trying to find a needle in a haystack. The other, other problem we have, and we're going to show you that, is that when you try to rewrite the memory, we have no direct control over the algorithm of the game. So sometimes uh, we have to find a way to, to trigger the algorithm to do something for us. And sometimes it works, sometimes it does not. So in some cases, it's not as reliable as patching the, the binary. So here is what we're going to present to you. First, we're going to give you a quick background of a game. Uh, who is playing game here? Raise your hand. Almost everyone. OK, so that will be pretty quick. And then we're going to show you how we can actually really build a uh, map hack, reverse a game and build a map pack out of it uh, with Cartograph. Uh, then we're going to show you how uh, we are able to make invis invisible unit on another game. And finally we'll discuss how we can actually rethink the network uh, to prevent being caught when we are cheating online. And finally, uh, if the god of the demo are with us, Josephine is going to show you how Cartograph code is and he's going to do in real time a map hack for you if it works. Uh, so, bit of background. Uh, we all know that uh, money give, uh, that uh, games actually earn a lot of money, about 273 million this last year. And there is a ton of different kind of game. Uh, action game, Mario, uh, first person shooter, sports game, uh, role playing game, World of Warcraft. Any World of Warcraft player here? No one is playing World of Warcraft, a few of you? I do, okay. And uh, some adventure game, not that interesting to cheat on, actually. And finally, strategy game. And the one we actually did focus on for this talk is uh, this real strategy games, because they are the one who are the most sold on PC. Uh, we could have done anyone else, any other type of game. It's just that this one is the most used, so that's, what, that's the one we go for. Um, for those who never see RHS, and I think there is almost anyone here who never saw it, uh, there is a bunch of, um, the idea is you want to beat up your opponent, and to do that, uh, you gather resources, and then you some, uh, accumulate them until you can buy stuff like building, units, and 
you have a what we call a mini map on the corner usually which displays the entire map and you see there is a point which is visible which is a part you actually show your opponent. If your opponent is in this visible section, you see it. And if you don't, if, if, you are, if it's not in this uh, section, it's what we call the fog of war. It's where you don't have any line of sight. And if your opponent is here, you don't see it. So all the entire idea of the map pack is actually to remove it. Um, we're going to show you the demo on the most recent game we came, we came with, uh, we, came, we were able to find. This is Supreme Commander 2. It's a uh, fairly uh, straightforward uh, real-time strategy game. It has been released in March, so it's the most recent one we came up with. Uh, the, new one, the newest one is, of course, StarCraft 2. I'm going to discuss this in a bit, but we hadn't had the, the game when we were doing uh, this kind of uh, demo. So, fairly recent game, and you see all our units, and uh, if we move a unit onto the top, you will see that we are able to uh, see the fog of war in effect and our uh, opponent is going to, to show up. And all the tutorial for this first part will be to actually lift up this restriction. So, as we said, there is multiple ways to cheat on the RTS. Uh, the first one is to try to have more resources. The second one is having more units, in some units which are cheaper or have more uh, hills point, invincible unit if you want. And finally, you can also do this kind of map hack. So a map hack visually is just this, right? We try to rewrite the memory and fool the game into thinking that we can see everything. So if we are successful, you basically see the entire map. So there is no spoon. There is, it might seem that there is three kind of hack, one for resources, one for unit, and one for, uh, for map hack. Actually, it's not true. For our perspective, it's only a a bunch of bits, and all we have to do is find the algorithm to figure out which bit is, to, is what, and try to flip them in the right order, so we can trigger an effect. So it's basically going through the matrix and see it, and try to modify it. So how will we build a map hack? Um, we had to find a way, the hard part was to find a way to instrument the game in a way that gives us enough information so we know where to look for. So we do that in three steps. The first step, four steps, sorry. The first step would be to reduce uh, the part of memory we want to consider as the potential price where the structure is, then we want to find it visually, and then we try to understand it by doing some testing, and finally we just rewrite it on fly, and either one time or multiple time, depending on which kind of uh, rewriting we need. So, how we do that is first we acquire the memory. Uh, cartograph basically reads the entire memory. That's why we had to move to 64-bit. Uh, That's where actually 64-bit is great for us. Is when, when a game for Supreme Commander 2 takes like 800 megabytes of memory, we have to have at least six or seven gigabytes of RAM to actually hold it in multiple places and do a lot of computation on it. So we work on uh, Windows 7 64-bits. You can't do that in a 32-bit architecture, actually. But memory is cheap, right? So the first step to instrument the game is we first by playing the game, and we tried everything except discovering the map, and we're going only to keep what is the, um, the part which did not move because we didn't discover the map, so it must be a memory which didn't change. And it should help us to reduce uh, what we are considering. Then the second step, uh, we're going to discover the map, and only discover the map, and this time we ask only the memory, we only keep the memory which did change. So it helps us to reduce further how many memory we need to consider. And finally, we do a third step just to clean up a little bit more, and we play the game again. And after that, we should have a uh, fairly small chunk of memory, usually two or three megabytes, where we know the map is in it, and then we have to look at it visually. That's what we're going to show you. So how do we acquire the game memory for real? Uh, this is um, a video of uh, cartography in action. So we're going to select the, pro cart the, um, the process of Supreme Commander, and then we're going to read the memory from it. It takes a bit of time because the memory, as I said, is 800 megabytes, and for each of them we have to store uh, the address and the value. So basically we have to, to store 1.6 gigabyte of data for this step. So it takes a little bit of time. You click on, I'm going to do a map hack. There is a ton of uh, button in the, in the interface. Uh, for those who wonder, uh, Cartograph has been developed in uh, C Sharp, .NET. So we do that, and hopefully, when this step is done, we can move on and try to do something else, which is we try to remove unrelated memory. Same idea. We go back to the game, and then we try to trigger as many stuff as we can, uh, either by creating new units 
uh, looking at our building, rotating the camera, doing zooming because this game use have a lot huge level of zoom. So basically, we try to change as many memory which is unrelated to the to the game to to narrow down what we have. And then we ask Cartograph to remove everything which did change, and this is actually faster. And we're going to basically knock off about 100 megabytes of uh, data which is not related to the map, and it's pretty quick. Then. So you see the progress bar in green in the middle of the video. OK. So when this is done, we have to do the most important step. Uh, we have to uh, use a couple of units to discover the map. And, that's and then keep only which, ha which part of the memory has been changed. Uh, actually, we never have a clean screenshot because a lot of things are happening all the time. But we are, it's really, really, really reduced the map from about 600 megabytes to 2.5 megabytes. Uh, so let's see that. So you're going to see on the video, I'm going to move two units to the bottom left of the map. Uh, you will see them right now. Uh, here they go, so one and two. So basically I'm discovering the bottom left of the map and try to remember the shape because that's the one we're going to look in, from in the memory. So when we have that, uh, we do a third step uh, which is, as I said, similarly to the step one, we're going to redo a, um, ma a change by, by, we're going to re-remove everything which will change by just playing the game a little bit more. Okay, I think I skipped the video. Okay. So, same thing, we try to move a little bit. It doesn't have to be f uh, long, it's just really efficient. At that time, we probably will remove half of the size, going from 2.5 to 1.2 uh, megabytes of data. And when we're done with that, uh, we need to find the memory, in, uh, the mapping memory. So now we have reduced as much as we can. We now really have to look at the, the memory and try to figure out where the map is. So we have one working assumption. It turns out to be true in almost every game we look at, is that the map is stored into a 2D array. Actually, you can have multiple maps into, uh, into the memory. Shoshan is going to show you this live uh, in the demo. But for now, we just assume that the map is one array in 2D, and if you look at this with using visualization techniques, what you're going to observe in memory is something like this. So you should be able to see with different colors uh, a 2D array which pop up in the memory we have uh, acquired. So let's do it for real. So first we're going to select the snapshot we want. So we have only one snapshot now, which is the one which is the, rem the memory we did remove all the part, and we're going to use what we call a heat map visualization. The heat map visualization is simply having uh, one pixel for what each bit of, memory, of the memory and assign different colors depending on the value. And if we scroll down to it, uh, I'm not sure it's very visible on the screen, on the bottom of the, of the map you have a very, very strange um, uh, shape. Can everyone see it? You see on the bottom of the shape? You see the shape on the bottom? It's like a tilted line, right? It exactly looks almost like what we have as the two unit. Yeah? Okay, so I'm going to show you a zoom of it, but that's the idea. So that's exactly what we see from Cartograph. And we're going to try to isolate this potential map. Uh, if you look in memory, here's what you look like. it looks like. This is, on the left, this is a game. On the right, this is what we can have uh, by doing a uh, heat map visualization of this part of the memory. So you see it really looks like uh, the map we have uh, in-game. And uh, Supreme Commander 2 is a specific kind of map. It's what we call an additive visibility map, uh, meaning that every time you have a unit, it actually increases uh, the value with one by one. So if you have two units, the value will be two. If you have three units, you have the value will be three. So basically, every time you move a unit, it actually subtracts or adds visibility point to all the map. So the way we're going to hack it is going, we're going to rewrite the entire memory with, F, with FFF, meaning that we have 255 units which are actually able to view each square of the map. And we're going to do this continuously into, the, into memory because every time you move a unit, you actually decrease it. So at some point, if we don't do it, uh, the, the map app uh, tends to fa fade. So uh, how we came up with the idea this is an additive uh, structure is because we are able to, do, to use another diff trick, which is called a diff map. So remember, this, is, this was the situation of the, of the game. And what we did, what we're going to do is we're going to move one unit, right? We know where the map is, so what we're going to do is we're just going to move the unit from bottom to up and have two different positions, and we're going to use what we call a diff map. So diff map is basically a heat map with two colors. Blue means nothing change, red means change. And if you look here, 
we're going to put you side by side with the previous map, you see that the only spot which, which did move was the one where the unit